Turning now to another major story out of the U.S., some grim discoveries in a Texas town. Three days after a fertilizer plant exploded, the bodies of 14 people have been recovered. And police are no longer looking for victims or survivors of the blast. Lindsay Duncombe is on the story and joins us now from the scene in West Texas. So, uh, Lindsay, what's the latest in the investigation here? Well, we've been waiting for a briefing from officials. It was supposed to happen about an hour ago. Someone came out and said it'll be a couple hours yet. We know that there are investigators on the scene from several different law enforcement agencies and the ATF, alcohol, tobacco and firearms. They're looking to try to figure out how this all started, but it may take time for them to piece all of that information together. But people here in this community are beginning to ask questions about how all of these chemicals could have been so close to where their homes were, where this school was, where the nursing center was. So there is this building sort of frustration as people come to grips with how big this tragedy actually is. You said 14 people have died. We have 50 homes destroyed and more than 200 people injured. So the scope of the tragedy is huge and people are asking for answers. And one of the people that they're asking for answers from is the man who owns the plant. And he sent out a statement yesterday saying that he will cooperate with the investigation and expressing his grief. One of the volunteer firefighters who actually died in the fire was an employee at the plant. And we're not talking about some big corporation somewhere else. The guy who owned this plant lived in the community, was a lifelong resident, and he too is struggling to come to grips with just what happened here. You talk about all the questions that people have, and one of the key questions for those who were evacuated uh, must be when they might be able to return home. Are we getting any indication yet? We may in a couple of hours, but where I'm standing right now is about as far as you can get. That police car behind me, that roadblock, on the other side of that are the homes that people want to get to. I was just talking to a man not long ago. He has medication on the other side. He wants to be able to go into his house, grab his medicine and get out. And what he told us was that they are hoping that escorts may take some people in perhaps today, perhaps tomorrow. They've given officials their their phone numbers, they're waiting for a phone call. When they get that phone call, they will be able to be escorted in. The other group of people that want to get in there, of course, are the insurance agents. You can see them capped out. There are insurance agents from all over the state. One group has taken over an antique store. There's another group that is over at a hotel. And this is a huge recovery or rebuilding mission that has to begin. And people are now anxious to get that started. But officials say it has to be safe. They want to make sure that no one else is in injured as they go in. And we're told that when we do find out that people can move in, it will be done very slowly and very methodically. That means the people who live on the outside area of the perimeter, the homes closest to where I'm standing, those people will get in first, they'll be let out again, and then the people who are closer to the blast area will be let in. So it will be an effort that could lots of uh, lots of questions in the meantime. Okay, good to know. Lindsay, thanks for the update. Lindsay Duncombe in West Texas.